molecular versus empirical formula. What's the difference? How do we calculate each of these? In this video, we'll get to practice how to calculate empirical formula. A molecular formula is a chemical formula that gives the type of atoms present in that molecule or compound and the number of atoms present in that molecule or compound. But then what's the empirical formula? An empirical formula is basically the simplest version of a formula. The proper definition of empirical formula is the empirical formula is the simplest whole number ratio of atoms within a compound. So let's look at how we calculate the empirical formula of a compound if I'm given the percentage composition or masses of the different elements within that compound. I'm going to be showing you how to calculate the empirical formula by going from the mass or percentage composition. Then we will look at how to take our empirical formula and convert it into the molecular formula. These are the steps that we will be using if we are given percentage composition or mass of various elements and we are asked to calculate the empirical formula. Following these steps will take us from a percentage composition, so something like 31.8% potassium, 29% chlorine, 39.2% oxygen. It'll take us from this percentage composition and it'll eventually get us our empirical formula. So let's do this one as our first example. Step one, if you're given a percentage composition, we're going to be taking those percentages as our mass for those different elements. Now we do this because we assume 100 grams. So what I mean by this is 31.8% potassium, we're going to assume that we have 31,8 grams of potassium, 29 grams of chlorine, and 39,2 grams of oxygen. They are my masses in grams. Step two is we're gonna convert these masses for each of these elements into moles. And we're gonna do that using this formula. So we're going to do this mole calculation for each of these three. You only need to write the formula out once, and then you can just do your working out or your substitution for all three of them. So I've written my formula out once, and over here I'm calculating my moles of potassium. See how I use this little subscript just to indicate what moles I'm calculating. This helps you to not get confused later on in the sum. 31,8 is my mass, divided by 39, which is my atomic mass, my molar mass, we're working with potassium. So therefore, if we look at our periodic table, our atomic mass of potassium is 39. That represents our molar mass. I get 0, 0,81538 mole. I'm not running off yet. In fact, I get this very long decimal in my calculator. I can store it on my calculator and use the whole long decimal as is in my next step. So now that I've worked out moles of potassium, I'm going to quickly do the same for chlorine and oxygen. There's my moles of chlorine. I took my mass that was given and I divided it by the atomic mass of chlorine, 35,5 according to my periodic table. When working out the moles of oxygen, I got exactly 2,45. Take note how I'm dividing it by the atomic mass of oxygen, which is 16. Our next step is to write these as a ratio. So we've got potassium to chlorine to oxygen and their moles, their number of moles is in a ratio as follows. That just comes from there, our number of moles. Step four is to divide all of these by the smallest. We're essentially simplifying the ratio. We're trying to get whole numbers because remember, our empirical formula and our molecular formula, they have whole numbers as little baby subscripts that tells us the number of atoms within the compound. So if you look carefully at these three, this one is the smallest. 2,45 is by far the biggest, but this is 0, 0,815 and this one is 0, 0,816. So if you look here, the eights are the same, ones are the same, then we compare five and six, five is smaller, therefore this number is smaller. So we're gonna divide each of these three by this number. There we go, dividing by the smallest. Over here I get one because I'm dividing this by itself. Over here I get one comma zero zero one, which is very close to one. So we can round that down to one. And over here I get three comma zero zero four in the same way this is very 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 close to our three which is a whole number so i can round that down to three what this tells me is that i have a ratio of one to one to three to one to one to three ratio which tells me that therefore my empirical formula is k1 cl1 o3 k1 cl1 
O3. We know that if we have one, we don't put it there. So KCl O3. Just backtracking a little bit to step five and step six. Step five is to make sure that you have whole numbers. So when we divided it by the smallest, we got one, one comma zero zero one, essentially one, essentially a whole number, and three comma zero zero four, essentially a whole number. So this is fine. We essentially have whole numbers, and therefore step six, our final step, is I could then write my empirical formula, KCL03. Let's look at example two where I need to do something in addition in step five because I do not have whole numbers. Our second example says octane contains 84.2% carbon and 15.8% hydrogen by mass. Calculate the empirical formula. So we're looking for the empirical formula. Remember, we're going to follow these six steps. Let's go. Step one, if you're given percentage composition or if we're given mass in grams over here, it's percentage composition, we're going to take these percentages as our mass, which means I have 84.2 grams of carbon, 15,8 grams of hydrogen. Step two, I'm going to convert these masses to moles for each of these elements. And I'm going to use this formula. I only need to write the formula once, but I'm going to do two separate calculations because I have two elements. So I've taken my mass, given in each case, divided by my molar mass. I can find that by looking at my periodic table, the atomic mass number, and I get number of moles. Remember, don't round off yet. Step three, I'm going to write them as a ratio. Step four, I'm going to divide all of them, or in this case, both of them by the smallest, which is this one, 7,016 recurring. For this one over here, I get one because anything divided by itself is one. But for this one, I get two comma two, five, one, and so on. Now, my next step is to make sure that you have whole numbers. Now, if you can recall from our previous example, when we divided by the smallest, we had one, we had one comma zero zero one, extremely close to the number one, and we had three comma zero zero four, again, extremely close to the number three. Over here, we have one, but we have two comma two five. This is too far away from the number two to round down. This is by far not a whole number. It's two and a quarter. 0.25 is a quarter. Step five, make sure you have whole numbers. What we're gonna have to do sometimes is we're going to have to multiply these in order to get rid of the decimal and in order to make something a whole number. Now, if you have two comma two five, because 0.25 is a quarter, the most logical thing to multiply this by in order to make it a whole number is four. If you multiply two comma two five by four, you're going to get nine. If I multiply this side by four to get rid of the decimal, I have to do it to the other side as well. And one times four is four. Now you might say, but ma'am, we didn't exactly have two comma two five. You multiply two comma two five by four. Well, let me show you if I multiply this over here, 15 comma 8 divided by 7 comma 0, 1, 6 recurring by 4. So essentially I'm multiplying this number over here by 4. I get 9 comma 0, 0, 7. And that is close enough to 9 for me to write it as a whole number 9. Then step 6, if you have whole numbers, what we can now do is we can write our empirical formula. So we have carbon 4, so C4. H9, nine hydrogens. Therefore, my empirical formula for octane is C4H9. In the next video, we will look at how to calculate the molecular formula if we have our empirical formula and if I give you the molar mass. So make sure you subscribe, keep your notifications on for that video.